I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. On this video, we're going to be wet blasting this 70 Nova. Wet blasting is a lot better when a car is like this and there's nowhere for the sand to clump up and get stuck. You can see realistically, the only spot we have that might hold sand is a the rocker panels. We're going to wash it down really good. After that, this car hopefully should be all clean, fresh metal. We'll get to a epoxy priming. Here's our blaster we're going to be using. It's an EcoQuip. Um, it's got its own water tank. We got a rust inhibitor in it to stop flash rusting that should hold this car from rusting in three days. That's very important on the wet blasting. Here's our pot with our sand water mixed up and then all our controls to get going. So, like I said, we're gonna dive right into this video. Let's get to sandblasting. Um, I'll do some voiceover on it and talk about what we're doing in the process and then we'll do the epoxy prime and then come back with a final thoughts and show you what the car looks like. If you follow along to my channel, you'll know that less than a week ago, we put out a sandblasting video that's gonna be very similar to this video on a 70 Cuda. I'm trying to follow the process on each car build, so if someone is building a Nova and they're only watching this Nova videos, that you understand how the whole process works if your Novas come to my shop, or if you're trying to find someone to do your Nova, how I feel would be the best way to go about stripping the car down and then building it back up. So. Apologize in advance if some of this stuff is repetitive, but we'll go over the whole process. So as you can see, we have the car on the frame jig, we have it cut out. Most of the floors out of the car, it makes it a whole lot easier to blast these cars you see just standing there on this frame table and just working around. I'm working in a corner, usually I start on the top roof line, I'm working my way to the front. It doesn't matter, you just have to come up with a system so you know where you blasted and where you still have to blast because as the sand's laying on this car with the water and as it's drying, it looks just like the washed up beach sand, that dark brown, which almost looks rust. So it comes to a point that when you start hitting this car and there's all this sand laying all over it, it's hard to tell what's actually rust and what is needs to be washed off sand. As far as the media we're using, we're using a True Abrasives Medium Grit crushed recycled glass so this seems to work the best on these cars and gives me the finish I want for epoxy primer now also in the water tank what you have to make sure you add we're going to use an express blast rust inhibitor so it's a cleaner degreaser and rust inhibitor what it's going to do is these cars with the water on them and the bare metal especially when you open them up in the sandblasting process will start flash rusting in less than 30 minutes this will actually keep the metal conditioned and stop flash rusting for what it says up to 72 hours. Usually this process we're going to try to do in a whole day. We started at the as sunlight was coming up and we're going to finish this hopefully by the end of the business day. If we have to stay later to get the car sealed up in epoxy, we will. Another product I used to use uh, was Hold Tight 102. That's another good rust inhibitor product. As long as your blaster is using one of these products I feel like you'll be okay what you don't want and we've got burned on in the past was you hire a blaster and then they come out and they say they're using all this stuff and then come to find out 20 minutes after the car is sandblasted well it starts rusting and it's not their problem so this is why we like to keep things in house this is why I bought all the blast equipment this is by far not my favorite thing to do however when you have control over the timeline and the product outcome it really makes you makes it worth doing the whole job start to finish so that's what we try to do we don't want we want the customer's best satisfaction and like I said a lot of times with the sandblasting and this could even goes with powder coat I've heard that if it's not blasted properly prep properly and the powder coats done over it down the road you'll be sitting there and have cracking and issues down there so really you just got to find the good people you trust to do this job and I recommend watching them asking lots of questions and I think that's why we're putting out videos like this it, this is what you're to look for because back you know going back years ago when we first got and start, started hiring some wet blasters and everything we didn't know all this you know oh it's fine you know the, it's a little bit of flash rush just Wipe some off for a while, I'll be fine. No, this is the way to do it. Metal condition the car. This helps the paint stick. It gives you a good surface. You don't have to do anything. The stuff, the rust inhibitor, a lot of blast companies won't want to use it if they don't have to because it is expensive. But when we're trying to put out the quality of cars and then saving the hassle down the road, it makes every bit worth it.
So getting back to this 70 Nova and the blasting process. So you can see right now I'm making a system. I'm working my way down, spraying out the rockers everywhere I can get in with this blasting stuff. We just want this car as clean as it can be everything off of it so now we can assess to see if there's any more damage and honestly most of the time with the blaster you're going to find more damage it's going to find the weak holes in the metal the rust that's just kind of barely holding on that's starting to penetrate through and that's what we want we want when we're done with this car everything that goes in epoxy primer that's solid rust free metal if there's not rust underneath the metal when we top coat it with epoxy that's less of a chance of it coming back and i feel like most of the problems with these cars that get restored and they come back and have issues down the road is just bad work on the base material so i think this is the most important part of the process that you know the rust comes from the backside up and then epoxy stops moisture it's a moisture barrier it stops that st the rust and everything else so i really think this is the right process we get the car down to bare metal we're cleaning everything up and this process it looks like it's going by really fast but we're in 10 times the time lapse so you really see this is a slow process that we're just focusing this hose and we're just blasting out the rust there's not a, a certain process that you have to blast this way usually we try to hit it at an angle and then kind of help move the rust off but especially on outer panels you don't want to hit them directly because that's going to put more pressure on them you kind of hit them at an angle and peel the uh the paint and everything else up the rusted areas you have to hit them a little bit harder obviously because it takes longer to come off so this right here is the most important part i feel of the whole sandblasting process the wash down phase what we want to do we're just running off the water tank with our rust inhibitor in it and you can usually tell at this point if a rust inhibitor metal conditioner is in the car because it doesn't give it that that it gives it that dull gray look to it so that's the metal conditioner and what the metal conditioner basically says is you know as soon as it dries the metal's ready to be prepped so now that it's dry we're going to do a quick walk around looking at this car it looks really good you could see there's some pitting especially in the drip rails everything else where the blaster opened it up a little bit we didn't blast the rear package tray obviously we're not keeping it but everything else on this car for the most part is blasted you can see i hit the vin number very lightly and the front cow tag just from a distance under the dash coming in through the firewall this made it so much easier to just get open up that area and get up in those dash uh, panels because there is rust in there I've found in the Novas in the past it is a pain in the butt to get up there to get the blaster that giant hose maybe a smaller pop blaster if you're doing this at home might be a better option but then again you're it's hard because you can't see because all the sands coming back down and hitting you in the face back on track with the video you can see I'm using the weld through primer I'm getting all the areas I think that we're gonna have to actually weld on this car once we get all those areas that I think we're going to have to weld in the weld through primer and what this is going to prevent us, this is going to prevent us from having to go back through on this car and sanding down that epoxy primer. Every time I try to remove this epoxy primer, that's why I like using the epoxy because every time I try to remove it, it's just a pain to get off. It's like super glue on this metal, especially when it's sandblasted metal. So. This is going to save us a lot of time, a lot of sanding belts and everything. If we just go ahead now, tape off everywhere we know we want to work or weld. I'm also going to tape off some areas in the dashboard and the drip rail area that I know just need rust attention. So we might not be putting panels on there, but even if I have to address that area, we're going to put tape over it because the weld through primer, removing that is not an issue. And that will stop it from also flash rusting. You don't want to keep, again, any bare metal because now we have a chance of reintroducing a new batch of rust on the car. Right now that everything's taped up, we're going to hit it with two coats of Omni 172 Black Epoxy Primer. I get a lot of questions on this sometimes that people ask me, why are you using the Omni brand that it's more of a house brand epoxy primer? Well, talking to PPG reps and everything else, they say to the Omni, all their epoxies pretty much are the same. This doesn't have a UV protection, but on these cars, they're not going outside. I tell the owners that the uh, epoxy primer 
hammer does its job. I've never had problems with delaminating. And realistically, to you got to justify the cost somewhere. If I don't see a, a cost benefit in epoxy primer that's three times more money, I'm not going to use it. There are other brand epoxies out here. I use a lot of PPG products, so we just sit there and we're going to stick with the PPG lineup. So this epoxy primer is mixed with the MP172 or the 171 or 170 determined on the color that's a two part to a one part MP175 and then what I do I put half a part acetone in it. It's going to thin it out. We're, again, we're using this more as a sealer than anything else so it flows really nice. The texture looks really nice. The car looks really nice. I'm saying that there's going to be some sand areas coming out of these corners. We also blew off this car with the sandblaster after the process and after all that wash down. The car is clean, but there still is going to be that hidden sand. So don't think you're going to do a perfect paint job right now or primer job. You just The idea is to get the car covered, keep it from flash rusting. Once we get two coats on this with the 15 minute flash, this car should be ready in about three days. I usually wait to start the build process. All right, we're gonna wrap up our video on the 70 Nova on sandblasting. So as you can see right now, we had the car down to bare metal and we've exposed a couple areas that need attention. That was the whole point of sandblasting. We want to strip down the car, down to its fresh metal, get everything clean, and know that there's no more rust on this car for the most part, and then we sealed up an epoxy primer. You could see there's certain areas that I taped off. We put our weld through primer directly on the metal, so then we don't have to take off the epoxy primer, because this stuff to remove is a real pain in the butt. So we could save ourselves a little bit of time and add the weld primer on the areas that we know we're going to weld it makes things a little bit easier right here i still have to remove that piece we just cut it off i use that there instead of tape so we'll remove that we'll clean that up by hand behind it and then we'll add our weld through primer um, there's a couple areas that i did miss in the weld through primer but we'll come back to them no big deal so Looking around the car on the sandblast, and we did expose a few areas up in this drip rail area that when we sandblasted it, they either have really deep pitting or we blew through a couple spots. So we'll kind of piecemeal this here or there as we're building this car, cut certain sections apart and start fixing it. There's a couple holes from us disassembling the car, which we left till about this stage. And like I said, just so we don't get burnt out, I like to assemble a little bit, do a couple smaller patches just so we keep the ball rolling so I'll start building the floor in the next video and we'll work our way up as we hit an area like right here that needs to be addressed before we put the roof on we'll address it so other areas that we did blast the uh, drip rails like I said up here were pretty damaged the upper a pillars up on the dashboard had a couple spots that when we blasted them this is like I said what we want we didn't think the dashboard had any damage initially looking at it but once you hit it with all that sand it finds the weak metal and the rust and just gets it all out and then down here on this cow piece so we'll do another patch down there so we had it out today and that's why I figured now would be a good time to do the closing on the video we just watched the rest of the sand off the bottom so now that we start the assembly we're starting with a fresh clean project the whole idea I want to reiterate was we wet blast the car when we really can't find any places that sand could be trapped in at this point there's nowhere that this car was trapped in sand you saw I went in the rockers we blew all the sand out with the water everything's clear I can look right down this rocker I sealed it up with a bunch of epoxy that we just sprayed in there so I really think for the most part, this car is about as sealed up as it's going to get. And it's going to be a really solid build to start when we start putting new parts on it in this next video. So if you like this comment, if you like this kind of content, stay tuned to this channel. We're putting more of it out. This car is going to look really cool when it's um, going together. We're doing a little bit more than it's not going to be a complete factory build Nova, which is cool. The last Nova we did on this channel was not this bad and it was more of a complete factory build. So we're doing some more custom stuff on this car. Stay tuned for that. I really like this one too. When we get to put them in the black epoxy, it really makes them look really cool in my, bu my book. So like I said, we're going to build this. Like, comment, subscribe to our channel please. It helps us out. And I'm Rick from Cartridge Classic Cars. We'll see you in the next video.